Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with another fun DIY tutorial. And this time it's another cozy a project from the Gypsy Quilter. You may have seen the video I filmed on the uh, original kind of cozy that came out. It's a kind of a bowl cozy. We chose some strips to make that. So it was really fun, a lot more variety of fabric. And then along came the large bowl cozy. We filmed that one as well. There's another one, it's not only a cozy, but it's a casserole kind of hot pad. Be sure to check that one out. And now here comes the plate cozy, really to complete the ensemble. Another fat quarter friendly project and easy to do in just a couple hours. How nice again to be able to keep our food warm. And it's such a beautiful presentation. Um, and when you have guests over and you kind of want to take it to the next level, certainly the plate cozies help you do that. And if you want to have a really fun variety, pick up a fat quarter bundle. This happens to be the Blue Bird collection uh, from Edda de Sitar, Laundry Basket Quilts, She Designs for Andover. How fun it would be to get a, um, a fat quarter set. Maybe you can make each one of your plate cozies with a different combination and maybe coordinate some of the other fabrics with the bowl cozy, the large bowl cozy, and then even the casserole carrier. Uh, the fat course will do the job for all of that and then it's beautifully coordinated. So I want to throw that out there as well. I always love to coordinate things. But let's jump into how fun and easy it is to make the plate cozies. So your package of the pre-cut batting will have eight pieces. They look just like this. I'll just bring one out real quick so you can see it. It's got these little darts in there. There's eight of those and each one of the plate cozies will take two. So your package of eight will yield four finished uh, plate cozies. So if you're have a, you have a, maybe seating for eight, be sure to pick up two packages of that. And by the way, this would make a great housewarming gift. I'm always thinking, you know, a lot of um, my kids' friends are now buying homes. And so I'm always like, I would love to give a housewarming gift. How perfect. So I want to throw that out there as well. Um, as I said, fat quarter friendly. The instructions are included inside your batting. And one of the first things they tell us to do is to cut our fabrics to 13 square. I think it's actually a little easier if you cut the fabric a little bit bigger, maybe 14 inches square. And that way um, it gives you a little bit of a buffer because we are needing to do just a little bit of quilting. You could do free motion quilting. We um, simply chose the option, kind of a simple little uh, way that we were able to attach the batting to the fabric is we used our two and a half inch by 24 and a half inch creative grid ruler. And I just uh, kind of did that diagonal to diagonal. And I'm just drawing on here with a friction pen. Of course, we know we can um, iron that away. And I'm just gonna spin that around. It's probably a little bit easier than drawing on the other side. This is kind of, for me, the simplest way to quilt two layers together. I'm not that good at um, kind of that free motion quilting but really you can do whatever you want. And the same thing on this other side and you'll go, on, go ahead and draw that. And then we just, of course, sewed with a straight stitch. And let me show you what that looked like real quick. Oh, and you repeat that again, by the way, you're gonna repeat that step with another uh, fabric, that's what's on the back side, and then another piece of the batting. So you'll prepare those the same way and you're just going to sew on those lines. Now. This is one of the ones that I did before we sewed it because I didn't want there to shift any. Um, so I just put some of the wonder pins in there. If you're curious about those, um, super easy to use. In fact, I'll take one out and you're just gonna wanna insert them where you won't be sewing. So you don't have to take anything out as you're sewing along. I really love these. Um, a lot easier to use than a bunch of uh, paper clips, which is how I've done <laughs> some of my smaller um, kind of free motion quilting is just, you know, I'm in the junk drawer grabbing for my safety pins and I never seem to have enough. So these are really nice, um, easy to use. And I love the guard here. Um, so once that's done and you've sewn on the lines, of course, this is what that'll look like. And now we just need to trim around. It's easiest to just grab that same tool that you use to mark with and just lay your straight edge along there and just clean that up kind of along the sides. If you're comfortable with the rotary cutter around the corner, by all means do that. And then you can pick up that straight cut again, but you're gonna go ahead 
and trim that out. And let's talk about the darts in just a moment. So let me just put those aside, keep our workspace nice and clean. I really like cleaning, uh, trimming away the fabric that's in the darts. So we've done that ahead of time. In fact, let me show that to you. I want to, let me show you why I want to, I want to uh, get rid of that fabric in the dart before I start sewing it together. The next step is to sew, the, is to basically go right side together. And I, because that fabric is in there, I really can't see the other side of my batting. That's why I like to, before I sew the darts um, closed, I like to just trim in there. You could get your uh, longer scissors. The Kai's will certainly do that, where you're just gonna trim that away so that now for our next step, when we place this right side together to close those darts, I can see the edge cleanly and clearly. I'll use my fine clover patchwork uh, pins and I th actually they're called fine pins. I don't think they're called patchwork. These are not the ones I use for piecing. These are a heavier gauge, they're longer. They still have the great glass head in which I love that. We're just going to pin that and you're going to pin every dart just like this. And you'll sew a quarter of an inch. Now keeping in mind that it's, you're going to feel like you have to come well past this dart. You see what I'm saying right here? In order to stitch this quarter inch all the way out, you're gonna almost come like an inch past that V. That's normal. So that might feel weird to you, but that's what we need to do in order to maintain that quarter inch so we don't dive in there. Because we're going to be using these. These are gonna get food on them. They need to be able to be thrown into the washing machine and they need to be able to hold up. So we want to make sure we do have a good, solid, full quarter inch seam. So let's do that. And we would do the second piece the exact same way, just pinning those darts. Let's go sew a quarter of an inch together. Then I will finish the rest of the darts on this one, as well as the second piece. And then when I come back, we'll put our uh, two halves together to complete our plate cozy. So I've sewn all of the darts closed and I also, while I was off camera, went and pressed those seams open. That's going to help us in our very next step here. So I just wanted to show you those seams were pressed open. So let's uh, place one right side up and we'll place the other one wrong side up so that now we have right sides together. And this is where you'll begin pinning. We always want to pin those intersections that we want to come together first, and then we'll go back and pin in those corners. And as you can imagine, once we get everything pinned, and I'm gonna maybe use even some clips around there, we're just gonna designate a side, maybe this side right here. I'd like to avoid the corner if I can, where we leave about a three inch opening, and we'll use a quarter inch seam allowance and basically just stitch around leaving that opening and we'll turn it through. But I'll go ahead and keep pinning uh, this together, clipping, actually pinning in the corners as well. And then I will be over at the sewing machine. I think I'll also mark with my friction pen my um, beginning and ending point because sometimes I forget and just close the whole thing. I've done that before. Um, uh, and uh, just a reminder, wherever you start, be sure to reinforce that a couple times, backstitch, go all the way around and uh, the same here where you end because there will be quite a bit of tension as we go ahead and turn the plate cozy through. So I'll see you over at the sewing machine in just a moment. Plate cozy is going to come together here in no time. I, you know, I love the idea of actually um, them being different fabrics. Uh, I'm always in like, you know, should they all coordinate? Um, they're reversible, of course. So maybe you have um, some are this side up and maybe some are the other side up. You can really do anything you want. And I love that option. 
So we'll this, I'll work on pulling this through. <laughs> so because my opening, my hand can't really get in there, my point turner, this is another cool clover notion. I, I only try to keep notions that I really, I use these all the time. You've got this nice rounded one. Today, that's my best friend. Sometimes when I'm trying to get a corner out in a project, I use this. I love that they're both here and I'm gonna use that to reach where my hands cannot. And you can really press really hard to get those corners all the way out uh, where your hands can't get to. That was really helpful when I was making the bowl cozies because it was even tighter in there. So um, I didn't need it. As, I didn't need this as much with the large bowl cozy or the casserole. It was still helpful, but here it's just essential. So once you have everything out the way you want, now, oh, let me go get that corner right there a little bit more. I want to get that little. There we go. Okay. Now let's take that to our pressing mat. And I, whenever I'm going to close an opening, you know, I want to pre-press that as much as I can to help me out with our quarter inch seam. There we go. And this is where my wonder clips, I love my wonder clips. And I'm going to use the wonder clips certainly where the opening is, of course. But where our fabric kind of wants to dive in like that, like this right here, you see that? And I keep trying to kind of roll that seam to be out and flat. I will put a wonder clip there too, because that's going to help keep that uh, flat for me when we do a top stitch, which will now be an eighth of an inch. So I'm just going to clip that here, clip my opening really well. And as I mentioned, just kind of go around the project and kind of roll that seam good and flat. If you need to iron that, go ahead and do that. Um, we just, we don't want to take that tuck. All right, I will keep clipping all the way around and then I'll see you over at the sewing machine. We'll be using an eighth inch seam allowance. And this is where if you're going to use a colored thread, it's going to matter because you will now see it. I have this darker color on the top. I think the color I've got here, I can't quite see that 1546, I believe. And I have a really beautiful kind of light uh, on the back here for the backside. That way, um, it coordinates beautifully and it just blends nicely. So uh, that would be your chance to use some colored uh, thread in the project. All right, I'll keep flipping and I'll see you over at the sewing machine in just a moment. Love it. All done. See how nice that looks with the coordinating thread. You don't notice it. It has a nice finished look. And as you can see, this is completely reversible. I can put my plate here like this here, or I can just flip it over. There is no right or wrong side. And, you know, certainly whatever mood, you know, if you want navy blue uh, this time and then maybe the lighter blue next time. I love that. So a super fun project, as you can see, absolutely accessible. You don't need to be an accomplished quilter to be able to do this, um, to dress up your dinner uh, table, and obviously fantastic for gift giving too. So hey, there is so much more coming your way. We love bringing you new content every single week as we discover new products. It's fun for me too. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out and get on our e-newsletter as well if you haven't already done that. So much going on here at Shabby Fabrics. I'll see you soon on another video.